In this video, we are going to be talking about the top swing stocks for October 2019. Now folks, when it comes to swing trading, we love to focus on stocks that have a history of overselling and then overbuying. But we also love stocks that got beaten down on a negative news catalyst and are now increasing. Since every reaction in the stock market is nothing but a dirty, dirty, dirty overreaction, this provides us ample opportunity to trade off of. But I do want to be clear, these are not stocks to just blindly buy. You are always going to need to do your own due diligence and always stick to your trading plan. Even if I had a magic ball that I consulted before making this video and I had 100% accuracy with these picks, it'd still be a gamble if you got in randomly. While we as traders may be peasants, we do not trade like peasants, we trade like spoiled brats. Only trade on the best of setups. Why would you trade on a setup that sucks? I will not have any of my traders begging for crumbs. But in any case, folks, the only thing that I ask of you in return for all the work that goes into these videos, you know these videos take quite a while to research and put all the picks out here for you guys, is that you hit that ravishing like button. And of course, do not forget to subscribe for more short, sweet, and simplified videos on how to trade the stock market. Quick plug for those of you who are wondering what broker to trade these stocks on, I always start new beginners out with Weeble. They are a free and very beginner friendly platform with built-in scanning features that make trading as a beginner a lot more simple. And of course, if you sign up and deposit with our link below, you will get not one, but two free stocks just for trying out a great free platform. Okay, let's go ahead and start with MU. Now MU got beat down like a flamingo in a flamingo fire after negative earnings a couple weeks ago. And since every reaction in the stock market is an overreaction, we started seeing it run up. Now this was a cookie cutter play. Literally every single time it was oversold, we could have simply bought in and waited until overbought and made a profit. But that is not how we do things. We also wait for confirmation so that we can only execute on the best of setups. Remember, spoiled brat folks, not peasants. And now we've seen MU go from oversold to recovering about a quarter of its lost price strength. So does this play still make sense? Yes, we have upward potential from 44.48 to pre-overreaction resistance at 51.3. Meanwhile, our effective support is at $40.75. That gives us $3.73 of downward potential to $6.82 of upward potential. We love upward potential, folks. And just to be clear for those of you who are confused on how to set effective support and resistance lines, it's simply the most recent tested low. At this point, we've tested this level of support several times, and the more we test a level of support or resistance, the more relevant it is as it has a pattern of sticking to that. But in terms of digesting upward versus downward potential, I like to tell people to think of it as sort of a road. We have a clear road of upward potential of $6.82 to $3.73 of downward potential on the road. And this is good to know, but at the end of the day, it's the car that drives down the road. You have a road, but you also have a car, right? What's driving the car? The thing driving the car down the road is the amount of elevating versus deprecating factors. And we have a clear elevating factor of having just been discounted from an overreaction to a news catalyst. We have a huge elevating factor of getting to this level of support and then recovering. And if we break into an upward direction over our red directional SMA line, we'll have an elevating factor of being in an upward direction as well. When it comes to trading stocks, you need to have more elevating factors as compared to deprecating ones. We'll never understand people that are so cautious with saving money that they've earned and then when it comes to the stock market they just sort of throw that out the window. Buying into a poor setup or buying into an overextended setup is essentially the same thing as just going to Vegas and blindly betting on black. This, folks is how most people trade. Oh, okay, I'm gonna buy here. Okay, didn't work. I'm gonna buy here. Ooh, didn't work. Okay, I'm gonna buy here. Ooh, didn't work. Uh, day trading's hard. I'm gonna quit. Oh no, I lost money. Day trading is hard. And then they go and write bad articles about day trading. But the truth is, day trading is very difficult. But it's literally impossible if you're going like this. The two biggest reasons that traders fail is because, number one, they just randomly execute into positions. They don't have a plan. They're not learning from any sort of skill set. They're just randomly executing into positions whenever it feels like it's the right time. And the second reason is because 80% of traders quit almost immediately after starting. And the third reason is because traders are wearing sandals when they're trading. Why are you trading with open-toed shoes? If you're trading in the stock market, you need to have closed toed shoes. Okay, next we have Tesla. Now, Tesla has been a zip trader favorite for swing trading for quite some time just because of the highly speculative and emotional nature of the investors behind it. We love emotions, folks. We love other people's emotions. We don't love our own, but we love trading off other people's emotions. Someone else's misery is our happiness. We as traders feed off the misery of the masses. If you look at the price action just purely from the last four months since we originally broke into an uptrend, you could have once again just bought in at any time and oversold and simply held until overbought. But again, we don't recommend doing that because you want to take a higher probability entry point. 
but the fact that this pattern, but the fact that this is a pattern means that we have another elevating factor pushing the odds of success in our favor. But Tesla has also been quite overreactive to news lately. If you check the news reaction here, we got beat down and the very next week we regained the entire value. If you check out the earnings release here, same thing, we got beat down and regained half the value the next week. And we had another news reaction last week, which then resulted in overselling and then a speedy recovery to pre-news release highs. So what I'm ideally looking for with Tesla is getting in at a good deal on the RSI, but also getting in after another negative news reaction. We love, love, love buying bad news because that means we could profit off this subsequent overreaction. Also, by the way, folks, if you're having a hard time keeping up to date with all of these plays, highly recommend joining our free Zip Trader Circle Facebook group, the link to which is in the description. We post nightly watch lists and we keep everybody updated on all the newest events and the newest happenings in the market. Now, Docu has been running up massively. We originally called this out multiple times after it got beat down on poor earnings releases because this has a pattern of overhyping. But now we've seen some overhyping in the opposite direction. I'm not going to lie, I'm more of a cynic when it comes to overhyping. I like it when it overhypes downward. I like the misery. But overhyping upward is also an opportunity for us to trade off of. We are now seeing it attempt to break past previous highs, and what I will say is that any healthy uptrend is going to have its pushbacks. As you can see in this part of the uptrend here, we have periods where it did push back in certain time periods. Small frequent pushbacks, that's a good thing. It's a healthy sign, it's a sign of a healthy uptrend, but we do like them because they also allow us to buy in at a good deal. So I'd like to watch and see how Docu performs as we get closer to breaking previous resistance. The thing I will say is that this is a momentum play to the core. And I'm not the biggest momentum guy specifically because it means we are accepting more downward potential for the opportunity to potentially reach past what's unprecedented waters. Because again, we have a certain amount of upward versus downward potential. And that's using previous support and resistance. So if we're going into unprecedented territory, uncharted waters, how do we really know how far it can go? We don't, and that's a deprecating factor. And as you can see here, our upward potential is literally only like 93 cents to downward potential of $14 to support at $55. Support is at $55 because old resistance becomes new support. That is a simple rule of effective support and resistance. So why would we take this proposition on? That's a lot more downward potential as compared to upward potential. Hey, Charlie, I thought we liked more upward potential. This, folks, is why it is so important to get in when it makes sense. If we cross past $65.07, old resistance will become new support once again. And that means our downward potential starts at $65.07. That means that we have a floor there. If it crosses below the floor and it breaks support, then it goes back to resistance and the floor no longer makes sense. But the goal is to get in when you have more upward potential, or at least you have an equal amount of upward potential as compared to downward potential. And that way you can focus on elevating factors, pushing forward and increasing the upward momentum. When trading these stocks this week, I highly recommend that you always have a plan. A lot of people say, hey, Charlie, you never remind us to have a plan, but you need to always have a plan when trading these stocks. You need to have a concrete entry point and a concrete exit point. And with all due respect, you have no excuse to blow up your account or consistently lose money. We have tons and tons and tons of trading tutorials, different strategies, different techniques, and best practices to get you started all for free on this channel. There are tons of other YouTube creators that spend hours and hours every single day pumping out content so that you can become a more profitable trader. But moreover, if you're losing money, you should not be trading with real money. I don't understand why so many people are losing money and blowing up their accounts when they could just trade with fake money and then prove themselves there. I like to say proof and not promises. Prove to yourself that you can be a profitable trader by trading with fake money first. It's going to be easier to trade with fake money because you don't have any emotions in it, but you need to treat it like it was the real thing. And then once you've proven yourself there, you can start with a small account of real money. And I understand that a lot of my viewers have already been trading with real money for quite a while, but if you're not being profitable with real money, go back to fake money until you're profitable there. There's no reason to pay for practice. Okay, and last but not least, I want to give a bonus stock for folks who have stayed until the end. We love our zip traders that stay until the end. Now, FLXN has been quietly making new highs in anticipation of its impending FDA approval decision on October 14th. Now, this is for their drug for osteoarthritis of the knee. That sounds painful. But one of the things that we love to look for when it comes to looking for an FDA approval is having signs of the price action, early warning signs of price action to trade off of. And FLXN is providing just that. But again, what we are going to be focusing on is not just following the price action, but finding a good entry point where we have a price action confirmation. We always wait for confirmation, folks. 
but our analyst slash monkey friends are giving it upside towards $25, which again is extreme, but that's what the analysts do. So in summary, this is a play that if given the nod from the FDA could provide beautiful price action to trade off of, but make sure to have a plan. Biotech is tough enough. Don't just blindly buy in. Okay, well, in any case, folks, I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to reach out to us in the comment section below or join our free Zip Trader Circle Facebook group, the link to which is in the description. Anyways, folks, have a great day. Do not forget to hit that ravishing like button. And of course, to keep up to date with our future videos, make sure to subscribe for more short, sweet, and simplified videos on how to trade the stock market. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.